Hi, my name is Jens. I'm the founder of Wundergraph, and I give you a quick run through of how Wundergraph works, what you can build with it, etc. So in this case, we're building a Next.js app, but Wundergraph is completely front-end agnostic, so you could use any stack you want. Uh, you can see here we have authentication uh, implemented. So we use GitHub and Google. So we support OpenID Connect. Then here we have a form with input validation. So you can write hello demo. And you can see that works fine. I can submit this. And here we have a real time subscription. So we get uh, real time updates, I can choose the number of messages I want to get. So in this case, it's three messages, I can log out and log in with a second account. And then again, I let me show the five top messages, then I say, hello from second account, submit this, you can see we have authorization embedded. So the user is linked to the message that we posted. And as I said, this is um, real time across multiple tabs. So you can open a new window. We go to localhost 3000 to our forms application. We are still authenticated. This is cookie based auth. We send a message uh, here. Hello from second tab. And you can see this is popping up here immediately. So everything works as expected. Okay, so now let's dive into how you can actually build this application. So here we have our Wundergaf uh, application. So this is just a regular Next.js app, which we're using here. We have the Wundergraph folder here. This is where all your Wundergraph configuration goes in. And then we migrated our Postgres database. So in this case, we're using a Postgres database. We migrated that using Prisma, but you don't have to use Prisma. You can use whatever you want. Um, so you just can see that we have a user model with email. And we have a post model and post and user have a relation. So one user can have many posts. So that's our very simple model here. Okay, so then the way Wondergraph works is uh, we have this dot Wondergraph folder and everything in Wondergraph goes um, infrastructure as code. So you define your whole uh, API uh, infrastructure as code. So we're using TypeScript in this case. So here we can uh, define everything in our uh, Wondergraph. These actually don't exist anymore. Oh. So here we can define our whole configuration. So the first thing, and you need to think about this like a pipeline, okay? So the first thing is you say introspect without caps. And then you can introspect a GraphQL API, MySQL database, Postgres database, um, MongoDB is coming up soon, and we are already getting MS SQL Server very soon. Uh, you can introspect an open API spec, so REST APIs, no worries, and federation. Um, and so we also support federation uh, from Apollo uh, with subscriptions. So we're the only ones who support uh, subscriptions with federation. Okay, so as I said, you have to think about this like a pipeline. So you introspect the Postgres database. This gives you this database object. And then the second step is you create an application where you pass in one or more APIs. And then we merge all of them together. And final step is we configure our Wondergraph application. So here we pass the application. We can configure hooks. That's for custom business logic. We can configure templates. So in this case, we're generating a whole lot of TypeScript with React. We generate forms, uh, mocks, operations, etc. We can configure cores and we configure our cookie based auth providers. So that's basically the config. So to repeat that one more time, you introspect the database, 
This gives you a virtual GraphQL schema. We can then merge other APIs like your REST API or whatever you want to use. We merge that together. This gives you this uh, app schema here where you can see now you can query the users. And then we also have the type mutation. And here you can mutate stuff like add users, add posts, etc. OK, so that was the basic setup. Uh, infrastructure as code, nothing you had to, to like write a schema or anything. But now we're not ex uh, directly exposing GraphQL. Instead, what we do is we have a fusion or a symbiosis of uh, REST, GraphQL, uh, HTTP2, and JSON schema. So the way this works is we have this operations folder. And here you can say, I want to get the uh, all users. So this is our all users operation. This gives you 10 users. And then you have create post, delete messages, and top messages. So this is the way you define your operations. So in this case, we have top messages, for example. This is the one we were using on our front end. You paste in the number of posts you want to get. Uh, this is the what the user can supply. And then uh, you you uh, get the, the data back. OK. And the second operation we need for our app is the create post mutation. So in this case, we define three variables. Uh, two of them, uh, the user is not allowed to supply. So that means we're using the add from claim directive. So that's a custom directive of Wundergraph. And here you can choose whatever you want from the custom OpenID Connect claims, like name, email, nickname, email verified, loca uh, location, and provider. So in this case, we use name and email. And then the message, you can see that uh, we can supply a JSON schema. So this is the, the data the user can supply. We can put a description. We can put a title. Uh, and then we have some other options for JSON schema validation. So let's make a small change. So for example, we remove uh, the bank. So we don't allow banks in this case. I save this, and you can see that the change is picked up by our uh, by our uh, configuration tool. If we now go to our front end, give me the five top posts, and I write something, hey, and add a bang, you can see that we now have a regex uh, error because we're not matching the pattern. Uh, obviously, you could change the, the UI to, to a bit. And one question I hear a lot from users is, um, is this client-side validation or a server-side validation? And the answer is both. So we validate both on the client and on the server. And this is done using uh, JSON schema validation. So the way this works is, if you look at the mutation again, so we have create post here. And then you go to the forms TSX. So that's our user interface, actually. Uh, if you look at the the lines of code of our application that we're actually writing, it's not much, like 20 lines of code. Here we have the create post form and the top messages live form. So that's the two forms that are generated from our operations. You, you, you're not forced to use the forms. You can also use just a TypeScript client or a TypeScript client with React hooks or a TypeScript client with React hooks and forms generated forms component. So it really depends on, on your use case and the level of customization you want to have. So if you look at this uh, create post form, you see it's uh, in the generated folder. And it has a link to the uh, JSON schema file that contains the create post input form. So that's the way we do form validation. And yeah, that's a, a very simple component. There's a library that lets you build forms with JSON schemas, and that's what we're using here. So if we look at this input, uh, let's search for create post. You see the input for create post is of type object. It has the properties message. And this is of type string. It has this input pattern. You see the, the exclamation mark or bang is gone. 
and no additional properties are allowed and message is required. So that's the JSON schema that we use for both client and server side validation. All right, so we have everything in place. So this is again our application here. Uh, the, the code we wrote, so we iterate the auth providers and add a bunch of buttons to, to log in. If you use the use on the graph hook, you get the user object, uh, which is the one at the top here with all the user information. And you get the client with auth providers, a logout function, and that's basically it. So yeah, that's the way you build something with, with Wondergraph. Let's remove this guy and say goodbye. Oh, not allowed. Okay. Goodbye. Message is here. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you want to try this out yourself, go to wondergraph.com. Um, there's at the, at the very top, there's a button, try it locally. So you can run this on your local environment. Uh, it doesn't take much time. And at the bottom, there's also uh, a code snippet. You can copy paste that into your terminal, try it out yourself. And then, yeah, I'm very curious to hear, hear your, your thoughts. So you can join us on Discord. So wondergraph.com uh, slash Discord, or just click the, uh, the, the button on our website to ask for a demo. And I would love to have a chat with you. All right. Thanks for watching. And See you soon.